Well, this is a Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. And this is a pretty big moment for me, if I'm being honest. I've dreamt about driving one of these since I was a kid. And I've driven every other car on my channel except for a Lamborghini car. I've driven the Urus, never the cars. So this is very exciting. I just wanna say thank you for watching the channel because I wouldn't be able to do this for you guys. So to say thank you, I'm gonna make sure this is the most, most in-depth review. I'm gonna make sure that you guys get to experience this right alongside me. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and check out the 2020 Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the lineup. So the Huracan sits as the entry-level Lamborghini. You're gonna have this, the Urus, and the Aventador. And the Aventador is gonna be the flagship. Now, with this, you used to have the LP like 610-4, and that was the all-wheel drive version of this. Then you had the Performante as the top ranging model in the Huracan lineup. Now the Evo is gonna have the engine from the Performante, which is what you see here. You can get it in all wheel drive or you can get it in the two wheel drive model, which was recently announced and I believe is just now starting to hit dealerships. And then you do not have a high end version of the Huracan yet. They may come out with a new Performante. It has not been officially confirmed, but we all know there is going to be a higher performance model later on down the line. So this, as it sits, is the most expensive new Huracan that you can buy right now. So it's all wheel drive, it's the Spider, it has basically every single option, and it's around $363,000. But don't worry, the base MSRP is only $287,000. Now, that may seem like a lot of money, but you have to look at this through the lens of the people that actually buy this car. This is a toy. If I walked into a Walmart or a Target and I bought the most expensive, most extravagant Nerf gun or water gun, I don't think about depreciation on something like that. I don't think about the fact that I may not get any use out of that other than enjoying it for the few times that I use it. That is what this is. This is an expensive, extravagant toy. And when you look at it from that lens, this car is unmatched. So let's go ahead and get into why that is. Let's start with this color. This color is called Blue Sedaris, and it is the most expensive option on this car. It is a $14,000 paint coat, and it is stunning. I call this the Spider-Man spec because you have red, you have blue, and everything just looks so incredibly good. This blue has so much flake to it. It perfectly just wraps around the lines of this car and you couldn't ask for a better blue on a Lamborghini. So I would say it's worth the option, especially if you're already spending the money to buy this car. Now, as you come to the front, you have a slightly different front end from the previous year model Huracan. You're gonna have this Y shape down here and it looks a lot more aggressive. Uh, tons of open venting down here. Obviously everything is fully functional. Then as you move up, you have your signature just aggressive mean lights here on the Huracan. The LED daytime running lights look amazing. The lights at night are all LED. It makes this car just look mean, menacing. And when you see this thing at night, it looks so, so cool. Uh, you have two aggressive lines there on the hood, very reminiscent of like the Aventador, which makes sense because they are in the same family. Now, I hope you guys can see this, but as I come right down here, you are going to have this open area right in there. And you can actually see that there's a little plastic piece underneath. So as the air goes under the car, there's a plastic piece that will direct the air out here to the side, like right in the middle. And then it'll meet the air coming around the side, basically pull it into that, you know, that circ that circulation right there and feed itself into that vent. So I think that's pretty cool. And then as we move to the wheels, you're going to have these massive wheels. You have 20 inch wheels right here up front and they look so good. You've got these massive carbon ceramic brakes 
hiding right behind there. Big red brake calipers. And there is one issue with this. For some reason, carbon ceramics are horrible at squeaking. It just squeaks so much. And here's an example for you guys. So yeah, it's pretty frustrating and it's hard to look cool coming to a stop when you're constantly squeaking with these brakes. Now, uh, these are Pirelli P0 tires made bespoke for this car. And these are gonna be 245 30s in the front, 305 30s in the rear. So nice staggered setup, looks really aggressive. And in terms of aerodynamics, this has these exact same aerodynamics as the coupe. You don't lose any of that function because of the different form here and you guys can see all the crazy lines just coming right here it just looks stunning and i'm out here in orange county area and this thing gets looks everywhere you go and rightfully so all right so as we continue through the back you guys can see you have all this open venting back here it's going to say lamborghini there letting out all of that air from the engine bay massive cannons as exhaust and they look awesome so i'll give you guys slightly different angle aggressive diffuser right here at the bottom you're even going to have a little area here and you can see the tire through there and just letting out all of that air that way you don't have any built up turbulence inside of that wheel well cooling the rear brakes cooling the differentials things like that your lights on here also look very lamborghini so you have that same y shape that you're going to have in the front of the lower grille and it looks awesome it adds to that cool factor at night um, and the car just looks cool in general. So even though the lights are cool themselves, it really is just a small addition to the overall car, but it looks good at night. And let's go ahead, fire up that V10 and see how this thing sounds. All right, you guys, so here is your key for the Huracan. Now, this is an Audi-esque key. You can tell by the design. You're gonna have your lock, your front trunk release, and then your unlock. And then right over here off to the side, you have your Lamborghini symbol, which is pretty cool. All finished in a real heavy-duty uh, metallic chrome right here. And then it's gonna say Lamborghini there on the back. Now, to get in, I can use the key, unlock it. The door handle's gonna come out. You don't have any touch-sensitive areas on here or anything like that, so basically, use your key or if you have the key on you you can just walk up to the car push this in and that's going to automatically unlock it for you all right let's go ahead and check out the inside of the huracan now i do have the top down because it is very close quarters in here and it is going to be very hard for me to get far back enough for you guys to get a good feel for how, for how everything looks but with the door open let's go ahead and see what we have here now obviously being the spider nice open air feel here's what the car looks like with the top up but i figured since this is the spider you guys want to see it with the top down now coming here off to the side you're going to have this red alcantara here really nice uh, you're gonna have some stitching here some leather piping coming right there obviously all leather here this quilted alcantara right here with the red stitching looks amazing you're gonna have this black gloss there door locks, mirror controls, and then you've got this carbon composite coming here, which looks very military spec. It almost looks like camouflage. Super cool. Speaker right down here. Huracan branded door sill. Looks awesome. Huracan branded floor mats. Aluminum pedals. More red Alcantara located here. More leather with stitching. More of that forged carbon composite you guys can see there. Looks so good. 
Now coming to the seats, they're going to be half leather, half Alcantara with that diamond quilted or that diamond stitching there in the middle. Red piping coming right here off to the side with more red stitching. Huracan Evo right there in the middle looks awesome. And then your Lamborghini badge right on the headrest. Now in terms of the steering wheel, full Alcantara steering wheel looks awesome. You're gonna have these carbon fiber paddles which are incredible. Here's a look at the back. Manual steering wheel, which is, I was surprised by. All of your uh, lighting controls located right there. What do you guys say? We hop in and we'll check out the rest of the car. All right, so once we're in, closing the door. Obviously not gonna make a difference because the top is down. And to start, here is that awesome start button. Lift this guy up, foot on the brake. And then you have that amazing noise right behind you. It sounds amazing. All right, let's go ahead and start with the steering wheel. So Alcantara steering wheel, red stitching located there, wiper controls, Lamborghini symbol, and then over to the left, you have your blinker. Moving down, you are going to have some buttons here to scroll through your menus. Right over here, you have some buttons for your cruise control. And then here, you're gonna have your Strata Sport and Corsa modes, which you can scroll through and that will change the sound of the car as well as affect how the car drives, handles, all that good stuff. That'll also change your screen. So if I go down to Sport, you guys can hear you have a more aggressive exhaust note. Down again, Corsa, more aggressive exhaust note. You get more pops and it holds your revs just a little bit higher. <laughs> that sounds incredible. But let's go ahead, throw it back into Strata. And yeah, the screen looks amazing. It's very clear, very vivid, and I absolutely love it. Now, coming off to the side, you have a speaker located way up there. Leather and Alcantara lining the entire dash. More carbon composite here, more carbon composite here with these really cool looking vents. Uh, stitched leather, red stitching going all the way across. And I love this detail right over on the passenger side. It looks really cool. It says Lamborghini, and it's such an exotic looking thing. Now, coming here, you have uh, some red Al Alcantara right there. A tiny area you can maybe fit a phone, maybe a key, but anytime you accelerate in here, it's probably going to fly out. Right here, you have all your switches for your window controls. You're going to have your front end lift, so you guys can see the front end lift working here, and it, it's pretty good. You're able to clear almost all curbs. Unless you have a pretty aggressive slant, you will have to go at an angle. ESC, hazards right here, parking sensors, and then your automatic start-stop. All right, so as we move down to the screen, you guys can already see the biggest negative. When you have the top down, it's just glare central. You cannot see hardly anything. Though at night, it looks really cool. At night, it looks very like Black Panther, Wakanda <laughs> type thing. Uh, just the colors and everything look really cool. And I just do like the system. It's very fast, very responsive, and it works well. It can do things like adjust your ambient lighting. But my favorite thing is if I click vehicle, you have your LDVI system that can come up. And the LDVI is going to stand for Lamborghini Dynamica Vehicolo Integrata. And what that means is Lamborghini Dynamic Vehicle Integration. It uses all of your onboard computers to measure things like yaw, steering, and use all that information to create a predictive system rather than a reactive system. So it helps you stay out of trouble versus saving you once you've already got into trouble. Very cool. And it'll show you how much power is being sent to each axle. And it will also show you your steering angle. So right here, if you guys can see that, if I turn the steering wheel, very cool. And then obviously when you're driving at higher speeds, this will turn ever so slightly because you do have rear steer on here. All right, so as you come down here, you guys can see a lot more of that carbon composite. Reverse, you're gonna pull that back and you're going to have a backup camera that comes up in your gauge cluster. And the resolution is pretty decent. It's not good or it's not great by any means, but it is good. Park, you can put this into manual mode. Also push it when you're in manual mode to throw you back into automatic mode. Electronic parking brake. This is going to be how you put your top down. And this will roll down your windscreen in the back and it is nice because you can do that with the top up to hear more of the engine note. A nice little area to rest your elbow, uh, Alcantara with some leather piping going right here. A tiny little storage area, which a leaf just blew in, and then a 12 volt right there. 
Moving back, you do have two USBs here. You're going to have more quilted leather located right there. And then as we come to the glove box area, you have a glove box decently spaced. Uh, you can fit your smaller items in there. Nice frameless mirror. And that is going to be it. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the car. All right, so coming under the hood of the Huracan Evo. So this is the same motor taken from the previous year model, Performante, and then put into this base one. So this is going to be 5.2 liters. It's gonna make 631 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. And this is gonna make 443 pound-feet of torque at around 6,500 RPM. Now, the crazy part is that if you've never seen a supercar up close like this, it looks awesome. You can see all the intakes right here. You can see just everything going on with the engine. The only thing you cannot see is uh, the 10 cylinders back there. Now, this is going to be all-wheel drive. It's gonna have all-wheel steer, and this is going to have a seven-speed dual clutch, which, as you guys will see in a bit, is mind-blowingly fast. Uh, so all that in a car that weighs around 3,600 pounds in this spider form. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what's under the front. Okay, so coming under the front of this Huracan, you have 3.5 cubic feet of space. It is extremely small, uh, a lot smaller than something you'd get in like a McLaren, for example. You have a 12 volt here, you're gonna have an LED light. You have this little pack here that's gonna have um, a little bit of tools, but for the most part, you may not end up using it. And then I have my backpack in here, which fits basically perfectly. Um, the top of it does go above this area. So I assume you could fit one good size carry-on if you can fit it in there sideways and you can potentially fit enough stuff in there for two people if you pack light clothing. Uh, other than that, it's really just for this. Throw your bag in there if you're driving around by yourself and it's to be used in a pinch. This is a supercar, so obviously storage space is not going to be its first priority by any means. Now, that's pretty much going to wrap up everything about the car. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the road and see how it does. All right, everyone, so driving the Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. Visibility is terrible. I cannot see any stoplights whenever I come to a stop. Um, the visibility out of the back is, would be okay if this area here was a little bit lower, because when I look out of the back, all I see is this, and then I can see like the roof of the cars behind me, which is pretty funny. Uh, visibility forward is actually, well, at least to the sides, is pretty good because you have that these quarter panel windows here. Uh, visibility here is fine despite the um, low windows right here. Um, in terms of the switch gear, everything is right at your fingertips. I will admit though, during the day, I mentioned earlier that you get a lot of glare on this screen. It is hard to use when you have that glare because you can't really tell what you're pressing. And then right now I have it in Strata, so we're just cruising along transmission is in its automatic mode you can still hear the engine behind you but everything is in its most docile form so you can technically drive this around as a daily though it does ride hard for sure but it's not uncomfortable maybe after a few hours it would be uncomfortable but the seats are nowhere near as bad as something uh, like a McLaren sport seat that hugs you way too tight it's really uncomfortable this has a little bit more give to it though it holds you in place very very well um, other than that the steering is great the steering wheel itself I love the suede or suede steering wheels they don't age well over time but when you're using them so if I'm barehanded like I am right now uh, it's very easy to grip especially if it's warm when the Sun's down let's be honest if your hands get a little sweaty or if you're driving quickly your hands get a little sweaty it's easier to hold on to. Uh, and if you have gloves, and if you decide to take this out to a track, uh, you really get some great grip on this steering wheel. The paddles are fantastic, column mounted paddles, and they work well. And at any moment, you can just pull a paddle and throw it into manual mode, and then it will stay in manual mode until I hit this M button, therefore throwing it back into automatic. So, um, 
let's go ahead and switch it into sport mode. So right now we're in Trotta. Sport, you already get an audible, louder gear change. And let me just say this. For the longest time, the Porsche PDK has been the benchmark for me when it comes to fast shifting transmissions. And all I have to say is I can't, I can't confirm this is faster, but from my perception, this feels like the fastest transmission I have ever experienced. So, for example, I'm going to floor it right now. Oh my gosh, it downshifts so fast. I think I just spit and I apologize. However, that is insane. I've never experienced a transmission that shifts that quickly. It is almost telepathic in how just quick it I don't, I don't even think my foot got to the bottom of the pedal before it, it downshifted um, the first time I did that it scared the living daylights out of me just because I wasn't expecting it to downshift that fast it's just it's absurd all right so let's go top down once again 17 seconds is how long it takes. And you'll hear a beep to let you know that it's good to go. So, perfect. Now we'll go ahead and throw it into course up. That way we get the best audio experience. And seriously, I'm not big into convertibles, especially when it comes to a super car. I would personally rather have a coupe. But there is zero denying. First of all, these carbon ceramic brakes squeak so much every time. But having the convertible means you can hear sounds like this. mode to activate the launch control sequence make sure your traction is off so I'm turn it back on and you know it's off because you pull it once it'll beep with a big red box that says no ESC at that point you floor the brake simultaneously you will floor the accelerator it'll rev up pull the engine at about 4,500 rpms then you let off the brake and hold on tight so let's go ahead and see how she does So we are on Ortega Highway, and hopefully you'll be able to experience this with me. So I have the top down now. I'm gonna have the top down on the way up. On the way back, we're gonna go a little bit faster and put the top up that way. There's not as much wind noise. So uh, hopefully you have a good experience with both. Let's go ahead and throw it into sport. Let's go into Corsa.
thing is, I mean, these shifters, you guys already know, super fast. Um, here in Corsa mode, going down an area like this, the acoustics are incredible. Uh, the turn in is fantastic. So first big turn here, downshift. Don't even have to go into the brakes. The grip is just amazing. wrap up my review of the 2020 Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. And there's not much to say about this car other than it is the most theatrical experience I've ever experienced in an automobile. I've been reviewing cars for about two and a half, three years. Uh, now, obviously, I'm sure as you go higher in the price ranges, things get a lot crazier. But at least for this price point, the mid $300,000 price point, this thing is insane the the sound it makes the way people feel when they look at it everyone wants to sit in it uh, I met random guys who we all just started talking and it just it brings people together in a way that's just unique um, you know a lot of these people see this car as a kid and you know it's like their their dream car essentially and you know I always say I would get different vehicles I say I'd get something like a McLaren I'd probably get like a Z01 or a Z06 and tune it for the money that you can pay for this but even still they don't really match the theatrics the heart pumping adrenaline you get whenever you just hear the sound or when you just look at this thing it has been a unique experience for sure and I just want to say thank you guys once again because without you I wouldn't have the channel um, I wouldn't have an income and I wouldn't be able to drive these kinds of cars and I also wouldn't be able to bring you guys into these experiences with me so seriously thank you so much and if you are new to the channel I'd love to have you guys subscribe hit the notification bell that way you never miss an upload and I will see you guys in the next review y'all take care bye